1037 Bob FM. It's Mark LaBelle in uh, joined by a special guest today. August 14th, Great North Wrestling going to be right here in Brockville. And who's going to be there? Well, just the greatest intercontinental champion of all time, the Honky Tonk Man. Hey, thanks for taking some time to chat today. Oh, gosh, man. You know, I'm so happy to get back up there and be with Great Northern Wrestling and, and just see the fans and have fun. And, and, I, and really, to get out of the heat down here in Phoenix in Arizona where I live and you know, the 107 yesterday, gosh, I don't know what it'll be today. And and we have a little bit of humidity with our monsoon season starting now this week. Yikes, it's warm up here too, but not quite that warm. So yeah, it'll be a little bit uh, cooling off for you. Hey, let's talk about uh, the record. Intercontinental champion for a year and three months, and that record still stands. How come, how come do you think uh, we don't see title reigns like that anymore today? It's the difference in the way they, they, they've structured the, the business itself, the business model, I think. Uh, uh, it's, it's more of a uh, television, let me say it this way, a television product as opposed to a, a road show like we were. We were a road show on the road, doing road shows like, like coming up to Brockville and places like that. and uh, We did it 300 days a year. It's more of a television product now, and they take more time with television and to have different champions i think in their mind uh they i think they believe that by switching it around more often it creates more interest and entices the people to to uh watch their program now did you know you were going to go for that run when uh when you first got the title belt or oh gosh no i was i had no idea it was ever happen like that is it uh is it true that you kept the title belt after dropping it to uh, ultimate warrior uh, no, not true at all. Oh, okay. uh, we we always g- gave the belts the belt then the, the night that the, the night that I lost it at Madison Square Garden. Uh, once the referee held the belt up and and passed it over to him, I never I never touched it again. Now you've been uh, I guess like a staple on the independent scene here for years now. How have you been able to like stay not only healthy, stay relevant, and not go down uh, I guess some of the dark roads we've seen some other wrestlers go. Uh, you know, I, I've, I've, I'm not going to say that I'm, 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 you know, crystal clean on everything, and 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 I've done my share of a lot of stuff, and uh, like everyone else uh, out there, uh, I think the secret to my long, I, I, I'll say that I think the secret to longevity for anyone is is to uh, develop your craft, develop your profession, and then don't don't rest on your laurels and continue on. Doing things that that try to reinvent yourself, like you know, when social media came out, I was one of the first people to uh, to really jump on board that and, and run with it. Then when podcast came out, I was one of the first guys, a, a real innovator in the wrestling podcast type things. And 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 I've always been on the cutting edge of uh, uh, of, of controversy, which you know, there again, you have to keep yourself relevant somehow, and and that's that's also helped. And you have to look back and say, "Gosh, you guys in, in the back in the '80s, the Hulkamania, uh, the Macho Man, the Rowdy Roddy Piper, the WrestleManias being created. These things they had an impact on a generation of people, and that generation of people is is coming along now that remembers me and remembers us. And it keeps. And of course, you know the uh, the DVDs that are out." Uh, uh, the, the action figures uh, for kids and comic books and the comic cons that we go to, that, that's kept me around. And what's your schedule like these days then? I do more comic cons and autograph signings now than I do wrestling shows. I don't, I, I'm, I'm not really fond of going out other than with Great Northern where they have good wrestlers and they have uh, you know good management people and, and they understand the business. Some of these uh, smaller, I call them, uh, off to the side, they're not really backyarders, but they're off to the side promotions. That uh, the facilities are terrible. Uh, some of the wrestlers are just absolutely horrible. Uh, two weeks ago, I had a guy. Uh, I was in a small show at a, at a county fair in Indiana, uh, in the middle of nowhere, and the, the kid kicked me in my elbow and then hyperextended my elbow, and I, I, I got back to the back. Why did you? Why did you kick me so hard? Oh, I got excited. Well, come on, man! You don't get excited, uh, but uh, and that's another reason they're just not trained properly, and it's a it's a risk factor. 
you know, I, I, I'll be honest with you, and the people are going to look at it. I'll be in my 60s. I'm in my 60s, and, and I don't need to be uh, kicked in the head. And well, I mean, what if he'd have missed and kicked me in the teeth? Then mm-hmm. he would have said, oh, I, I got excited. Oh, well, thank you very much. But the comic cons are much easier for me. In fact, I, I got an email yesterday. Uh, when I met, when we didn't get together to do this yesterday, I was uh, had, was answering an email from the uh, uh, Ottawa uh, Quebec uh, Comic Con he's going to have in October, and wants me to be up there for that, and I'm going up to do that. Nice. We'll get to see you a couple times in the area here. Yeah, yeah, and then the Comic Cons, even though they're long and laborious, being you know eight ten hours a day on the concrete and standing in a, in, in in your booth trying to sell your wares. Uh, it's a, I, I, sometimes it's just as physically demanding. Now, you always hear about uh, how healthy independent wrestling is today. You're, you're working with these young guys here now from time to time. What are some of the main differences? As you mentioned, the business has changed so much. What are some of the main differences from uh, when you came up to now? Uh, they want to do everything so fast. Mm-hmm. They, they want to run 100 miles an hour and, 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 and do uh, 20 flips and flops and bumps and climb here and jump there and dive here and roll here and uh, it's it's like a ping pong match and you can't you can't even really follow the ball uh and and i always tell the kids that i go in the ring with and if i have one when i get up to brockville uh i'll tell them the same thing if you think you're going fast you are you're going to be nervous i know it but just relax and and make every the thing is they don't make everything they do look good and they do it so fast that the the, the fans can't follow it yeah I, you know one 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 kick one kick one kick to the elbow is enough but if you, if you're going to kick a guy one good solid looking kick is better than trying to machine gun him with 50 kicks mhm now do you do you watch any wrestling today keep up with the product very little i, I keep up with the i in fact i don't even know what time it comes on out here where i live uh I, I don't sit through it because it, it doesn't interest me, and here's the reason why. Uh, I don't work for that company, so, uh, I, you know, if you're a truck driver you don't want to, and you drive your truck every day, you don't want to come home and watch a truck driving movie. Mm-hmm. So, so, I, I, and I don't, I don't, my job is the independence out here and finding out what's going on in the grassroots level of pro wrestling, and, and I've, I keep up with that. I can go on the Internet and read what happened on Monday Night Raw and within five minutes, so I don't have to sit through three hours of it. Yeah, three hours is too long, too, in my opinion. Uh, it's, it's kind of painful once in a while on Monday yes, nights to yes, get... Yes, and now I signed a deal to go up for... Uh, to, to, to be somewhere for the SummerSlam, I think it is, and set in uh, uh, one of the pay-per-view bars or something uh, upstate New York for this SummerSlam. And, of course, I signed on for it, Knowing it's only going to be three hours, so it's, you know I can I can drudge through that while I'm eating and talking to the fans. Mm-hmm. But now they switched it to four hours. I don't know if I need to probably renegotiate my contract. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, they announced that uh, last week. They're going to be uh, making it four hours. So yes, yes, and then and they're even. I think they're even apprehensive now and uh, about well, how can we do this? The the talent level, the talent level is for star power, and I say star power. When we were all there together, and some names that the Canadians would remember was the Dino Bravo, and we had the Rougeos, and uh, uh, Sergeant Rene Goulet, and, 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 you know, Pat Patterson, and all. We had a really good group, a good core of people around us all the time, and solid professionals. They have a lot of talent there now, a lot of people. They have a lot of bodies, let me put it that way, but not too many stars. Uh, in our locker room, everyone in everyone in there was a star, top to bottom. Not today, so that's that makes it hard to put a three-hour show together. Now, the odd time uh, over the years, we've seen you pop up in WWE for a guest appearance and whatnot. Uh, they have a show on the WWE Network called Legends House. Have you heard about that? Uh, I have heard about it. I've not seen any of it, but I did hear about it. I've heard that uh, uh, they went out and stayed for five or six weeks in California and and, and did this thing and. Uh, they didn't bother giving me a call on it, so if they ever do another one, would they call me? I don't know. Now give me, say, three to five names of guys that you would uh, find uh, maybe a tough time staying in the same house with. Oh, God. well, uh, boy, that's, that's really difficult because uh, 
I think I'd have a tough time staying in there, of course, with, with Roddy Piper. I mean, uh, because Piper's Piper, and uh, I'd probably have a, uh, a tough time, like uh, Duggan had a tough time being around Tony Atlas. I mean, Tony can get under your skin. Nice, They're nice people, but... I, and I like I like to be around them temporarily, <laughs> you know, temporarily. <laughs> <laughs> which which and and, and 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 even with my my friend Jimmy Hart, I mean, Jimmy and I travel together, and all, we live together more than I live with. We live with our families for for three years, three hundred days a year on the road, and and there gets there came a point where Jimmy and I would just have to. Uh, some days he would ride with the Rougeos or or, or someone, and then we, I would just take a car by and be alone by myself. Uh, there comes a time when you when you need that separation. And I, I don't know who I can name that I could live in that house with uh, uh, more than a, a day or two anyway. So I, I mean, <laughs> I, I don't know if I, I would really like to be in there with Vince for about a month. I think him and I could uh, uh, we could straighten a lot of things out. <laughs> <laughs> Lock you in a room together, eh? Oh yes, that would that would be quite interesting. Is there anyone that you wish you had the chance to uh, maybe go into a program with that just never happened? You know, I never really had the program with Hogan, and and, and I I know Hogan's a hot button issue right now around the uh, around the uh, media world and everything that's going on with him, and it's it's quite unfo- and and I've not talked about it to anyone. Uh, I've been asked to go on radio and television shows and talk, but I, uh, it's not something I like to do uh, on on those type of situations. But uh, it's unfortunate what's happened and how it all has transpired. And, you, and, you know, late in life, Hulk will be 62 uh, like I am, uh, in, in fact, in, in, in August and another month or so, in just a couple of weeks. And uh, at, when you get to that age and that point in your career, you don't like to see these things pop up and these, the, you know, the, your ugly past rear its head. But, but it happens. Uh, I never, and to get to the point of the question, I never had the chance to, to have a program with him, which I was promised when I signed on that I would do that, I would get that, and it never happened because I was became the intercontinental champion, and then I went off in a dire- different direction and different uh, towns every night than 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 Hogan did, and I wish I would have had that run. I wrestled Hogan once in a single match and twice, uh, once in a six man and once in a tag match. Only three times the whole time I was there, and uh, the reason I not only would I've liked to have done it, we had been friends since since he started and when I started, so uh, and we had a common ground there. Uh, but the monetary factor to be in the ring with Hogan was a ten thousand dollar day every wow. day. Wow! E- yes, every day. Now you're doing nine shows a week. <laughs> and you're mar- you're married to him for about six months. Thank you very much. Yeah, there's a retirement fund right there. <laughs> yes, thank you very very much. Yeah. Uh, it, it's amazing. People say, "Well, how did you like the leg drop? Did you mind taking the leg drop?" I said, "Listen, every time that leg fell on me, the three times I felt it, it was ten thousand dollars each time, and I wish I could get it ten times a day." <laughs> you don't mind it for that, <laughs> yeah. Um, just one uh, quick. I don't want you to comment on the obviously the comments that were made or anything, but just as far as uh, them wiping him completely from you know WWE, I think he's been taking off of the uh, WWE Hall of Fame. What do you think about that? Do you think that's fair at all? Or uh, right now, the, the the way the world is, the way our society is, especially let me say not the world because I'm not a worldly guy too much anymore, but in in North America because I am kind of up on what goes on in Canada and what goes on in America. Uh, the, the way everything is is treated nowadays with with these white gloves and and we have to wipe everything clean. Uh, I, I I understand it, uh, but as time goes on, I think small things will be reintroduced again. You know, they they did it uh, with the Chris Benoit, uh, and 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 of course now. This is the second one that they're going to do it with is wiping every the slate clean of Hogan, but and and you know but going back to the to the O.J. Simpson thing, they 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 wanted to try to wipe that slate clean there and 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 disregard. You cannot disregard someone's records. Mm-hmm. You can't disregard what they did. You can't take their name off of off of uh, 
uh, things. Uh, I know down in our country now, uh, there are people wanting to take statues down, uh, and they're wanting uh, grave graveyards moved, and and just all sorts of things. So, given today's the way society's running today, I understand it. Uh, can they do it? Should they do it? It's their it's their business. It's it's you know, it's run by one man, and if he wants to do it that way, then so be it. And we can't forget where we came from, though, is kind of what you're saying. Well, yeah, you can, I mean, you can't erase the history books. You can't go back and, and take every every video clip and every magazine and every photo and destroy it. Come on, let's let's get real. Well, especially when it's Hulk Hogan, too. Like, it's exactly. not just that's, a... that's like saying Tiger Woods never existed and, mm-hmm. and, and, and Muhammad Ali was never a boxer and, and uh, you know, just I, the things... It, it's, ter- it's a terrible situation. I understand all that. And, uh, and and it's an unfortunate situation, but the history books can't be changed. Well, like you said, it might come back around as well, too. I know they're doing a uh, Owen Hart DVD right now, too, so same kind of same kind of deal there. Well, exactly, exactly. See, and, and that was not even, uh, uh, you know, that, that was not even something obvious that WWE wanted to erase everything about uh, about Owen. That, that had to do with the uh, legalities and, of, and of course, his heirs. Uh, that wanted n- nothing, nothing for for Owen Hart to be mentioned in any way in that company, and I understood their side of it also. But there again, you know, here the drip system is going to come back, and even the Chris Benoit thing is softened up a, uh, a tad bit. And and I, I think in in twenty years, if you and I are still around, uh, the Hulk Hogan's name will still be around. That's for sure. Uh, just to finish up here, I just want to do like a little name association game. I'll give you a name. You can kind of either describe and tell a quick story, whatever you want to do. Okay. okay. Iron Sheik. Oh, gosh. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't like to travel across the border to Canada <laughs> or back with Iron Sheik. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 right after 9-11, we were working for some kids up in Toronto, and uh, uh, they had a show planned. In fact, it was that weekend, and they, can't, they had to cancel, of course, because everything was on lockdown. So they they rescheduled it for the next month, and they they call me up and they said, okay, it's rescheduled, fine. They about two days before I'm ready to leave to come up to Buffalo and drive across. They said, oh yeah, and by the way, you pick Iron, you get the rental car and pick Iron Sheik up. He comes in thirty minutes after you. I said, no, 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 I can't do that. I can't travel with this guy across the border. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we did. We made it across, and the the border guards were were excited to see us up in Buffalo on both sides. So oh, nice. it worked out. But I told my wife before I left home, if anything happens, and and I I still have a, a decent rapport with WWE, and they're the only people that can find us when we're out on the road. I said, if anything happens up there. Just call call Vince's office and then and, and tell them. <laughs> <laughs> He'll straighten things out. All right, uh, you mentioned him a couple times actually already, but Roddy Piper. Oh gosh, Roddy's Roddy's Roddy. You know him and I have had a had a had a verbal spat, uh, internet spat going on for years, and and every time I see him, it's like uh, old times, and we hug and have fun. Uh, great, per- you know, a, a tremendous performer. He started wrestling when he was like thirteen years old, and. And, and left home, left Winnipeg, and came down into the states, into California. He's done. He's done extremely well for himself, and his son's trying to do MMA now. And uh, I, I like I like Roddy. He, he's a great talent. He, I mean, I call him Piper Nuts. Like, like <laughs> he's a nutcase. He really is. Uh, he, he, even on a good day, he's a nutcase. Why do you think he doesn't mention that he's Canadian too often? Eh, that kind of bothers us a little bit, but. But you know what? A lot of the guys, a lot of guys in and out of Hollywood and, and entertainment business and sports business, when they get down in the states and they're down here for four or five years, you know, they don't really mention ca- uh, their Canadian roots at all. They they act as if it they were they were never there. You know, uh, they just they never mention it. Well, it's, it just seems odd to me because the guys that do, like say, like Chris Jericho and whatnot, like the whole country's behind them, right? Because. Uh, yeah, yeah, but they they get down here and they act as you know they act as if uh, they were never in Canada. There's there's some guys that there's a couple of guys that I I, you know, I never knew that this uh, the the Val Venus car I didn't I never knew that he was a Canadian mm-hmm. and then because he never mentioned it and I see him lots of times but he never mentions yeah you know I remember back up in so and so when you came there and nothing this I don't know yeah weird uh, the, and and it's not just the wrestlers it's some of these other sports guys and. Celebrities, they never mention it either. 
I don't know why. I'm not sure. There's a lot of fans either. up here. Canada's so a great country. I have to say that because my wife's Canadian, and, <laughs> uh, and, and my two children are uh, have Canadian passports. My son was actually born. He was born in Calgary. Oh yeah. So uh, you know, I always say the only th- the only thing worse than than a Canadian marrying an American is an American that marries a Canadian. <laughs> Oh man! Uh, sorry, back to the game here. Uh, how about uh, how about Rick Rude? Uh, Ravish and Rick Rude was uh, a, 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 he was the epitome of professional in the ring. I, I, he wanted every match to be perfect. He wanted everything to be just just the uh, the way he 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 had it in his mind. And I always said, Rick, your your spring your spring is wound too tight. He he was wound way too tight. Because things happen that that's uncontrollable out there, and you can't you can't dwell on it. But another fantastic, terrible, terrible situation that happened with him, and a, a horrible loss. Uh, Razor Ramon. Don't know him. I was never around him at all, uh, uh, so I can't make a lot of comments other than what I hear about you know his 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 situation. And uh, the best that I I did ask uh, Kevin Nash once. Uh, I saw Kevin a couple of years ago when uh, when Razor was going through a lot of problems, and I said, "What what do you think the deal is with him?" And he said, and, and I thought it was a really good quote, and he said it uh, again at other times. Only only Razor can help Razor. Mm, his and, own worst and enemy. That's, uh, that's true. How about uh, Terry Funk? Uh, 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 another Roddy Piper nutcase. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Terry can you can see Terry walking through a, a hotel lobby or an airport or 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 somewhere and he's just dragging himself along and he's not saying anything and you go up to him and you say hey Funkster what's going on oh oh I'm just, I don't know how much longer I can do this well he's had about a hundred retirement matches yeah <laughs> <laughs> but you know when the when the bell rings or he's in the locker room he is hilariously funny he's great to be around. And and I know both him, uh, him and, and his brother and had, uh, had, was around them a lot. I never got to wrestle either one of them. And gosh, I wish I could have. He's one of those guys that you always hear people doing impressions of too. Oh, I know because I mean I could even do his walk where he walks and walks along sideways and drags his leg and his <laughs> and he'll come in the locker room and sit down and he'll you know he'll rub his knees and go I don't know why I did that knee drop out there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, a couple more, and then we'll wrap up here. How about Ric Flair? Oh, woo, woo! Oh, I tell you what, uh, Rick, uh, he li- he lives it twenty four seven. I mean, he he lives Ric Flair, and whether he's got any money in his pocket or at all, he still lives Ric Flair. He wants to buy drinks for everyone in the bar. He wants a limousine. He's got to have a first-class ticket, a custom-made suit, and, uh, you know, he's good for our business. For a guy like that to do that, he doesn't walk around in, 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 in trashy, ragged clothes, and he shows up looking extremely professional. Uh, I never had matches with him. I was never in the ring with him, and I wish I could have. True champion, you're saying? Uh, yeah. Not, I mean, Rick, Rick was good for our business for his flamboyance and and. and, and you know the the kinds of matches that he had as champion uh was he one of those hard grinded out champions like a harley race no no not at all Mm -hmm. uh harley race was one of those kind of champions uh just to switch the subject real quick that could go out and wrestle i saw a picture of harley in the in the ring with uh mil mascaris from 1978 or 76 in mexico city the place was just packed with people and and someone had put a tagline on the bottom said boy i bet harley that was one of Harley's roughest matches working with Mill. Well, I had worked with Mill Mascaris on a couple of times, and and if anyone could get a match and make it good, it would have been Harley Race. Last one here. How about Vince McMahon? Uh, well, you can say whatever you want about Vince. People have called him everything and said everything about him. Uh, uh, I, I look at it this way. He's obviously a heck of a lot smarter than me and a heck of a lot smarter than a lot of us because he's he's a billionaire. And we're sitting around here wondering whatever happened to our millions, or why didn't we make a million? Well, he's made a billion. Uh, he Vince surrounds himself with really good people 
that that understand his way of thinking. He is very diff- different in the way he thinks. And the, the Vince can drive down the street and see something or see someone on a street corner and get an idea about something. That's that's he has a. I equate him to a visionary. He he has a vision. He he is like a a Bill Gates, and he's he's like a, a, a Ted Turner, and and all those people that that do this. They can see they can see things that we can't see. They can see a a, 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 a something that might make millions of dollars that we don't really see that what they see, and we question. We question what they, how they see it, why they see it. Are you, you know? And and uh, we all had questions about, of course, the Ultimate Warrior, and we had questions about the the Undertaker. Are you serious? A guy's going to give this guy this drop and call it a tombstone and zip him up and put him in a body bag? Mm-hmm. You know, I I never dreamed it would work, but it has worked fabulous. So I'm not the one to, to <laughs> believe me. I'm not the one to pick <laughs> characters. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're still going strong with your character. Well, I, I can only do one. <laughs> it's like I said, he, he's he's a visionary. That's that's what I say. Just not, not a genius by any means. People say that that mm-hmm. word, and it's very very loosely said, but it, it's more of a visionary. That'd be Lanny Poffo, the genius. Yeah, Lanny's the, Lanny is the genius. I mean, he is. I love that guy. He's so he's Lanny's so great to be around and have fun with, and uh, uh, he's got this, so many so many stories that are so funny and. Uh, you know, to live in the shadows of his brother for so many years, and now to to you know to step forward and swell his chest up and say, you know, I'm leaping Lanny Poffo. I'm the genius now, mm-hmm. uh, and it, it's I, I like being around him. I always have, and I've known him for 35 years. Just one bonus question here. Just uh, where, where do you think the business is going to go after Vince is gone? Because obviously he's passed a lot of it over to Triple H and Stephanie now, but he's still he's still the head honcho. So. Uh, it's hard to say. You know, they have a vision too. They and and you can see their vision coming into to play. It has been for the last. You know, it's not anything new. Uh, Triple H and Stephanie have been uh, side by side, arm in arm with Vince for the last five, six, seven years, uh, maybe more. Uh, you know, I'm not good with with time. I always thought the the, the young fellow Shane would take it over, uh, but obviously it was something that he just did not want to continue doing. I think he would have been uh, very, very close to the way Vince thinks uh, in a lot of ways, but he was a little different, too, in the way you could see it when he went out and did his matches, Mm -hmm. Uh, the kind of matches that he would go out and have with guys. Then you could see the kind of – you can kind of see the the person in the matches they have and the way that they think backstage. And so Triple H and Stephanie – uh, they're going to inherit this 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 global uh, thing. It's it, it's going to go on forever. It's going it, it's it's it that company pretty much can run itself now. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, what's your Twitter handle on that? Anything you want to plug before we get out of here? Oh, it's uh, official. The of, official HTM. Hockey Talk Man official yes, HTM. There, I mean, I'm on Wikipedia. You all, you, you, someone said, "Well, I, I couldn't find you. You're hard to find." No, I'm not. You can <laughs> just walk down the street somewhere. You can find me. Everyone knows the Hockey Talk Man. Of Come course, on, for God, man. They, they listen in this world today. You can't hide from anything. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes a good thing. Sometimes not. <laughs> Uh, Great North Wrestling at the Memorial Center in Brockville, August 14th. Honky Tonk Man's going to be there in a six-man tag. Tickets, uh, you can get them now at Trophies Plus. Just 10 bucks. you can't beat that. Are you going to have the uh, the guitar handy here just in case? Uh, you know, the last, last time I was in Canada, if you want to go on YouTube and see it, where Honky, Honky Tonk Man almost loses his finger. I was up in uh, Charlottetown, P- PIE. Uh, P.E.I., Prince Edward Island, I'm sorry. I'll get it right. <laughs> anyway, I almost got my, my hand torn off, my finger torn off, so the guitar thing is, is something of the past for me. But Road Warrior Animal is supposed to be there also, and that will be a little family reunion for us in the locker room. I haven't seen him in, in five or six years, and he's another guy that yeah, I, I like to be around him, and, and, and we reminisce about his partner that, that left us way too soon also. Awesome. All right. Well, a couple of legends going to be there and some great wrestling action in Brockville. Hey, thanks so much for uh, calling in today. All right. I look forward to it. And, and I, I believe me, when I come to Canada, it always snows. Thanks, man. Perfect. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye.